Here I am here live in my studio. It's 11 o'clock on Monday, the 12th, September 12th. And um, 11 o'clock mountain time. This is when I uh, do my live videos. I haven't been here for most of August because I was traveling and um, just kind of regrouping and getting ready for the fall, but I'm back and um, I'm super happy to be back because I really missed these chats. It's been, uh, it's always fun for me to, to join you and to see you um, say hello. So anyway, as you hop on, I'd love to see you say hello. Um, I had a wonderful time in Africa. Thank you so much for all of your kind words. Um, it was just a magical, magical time with my husband. And um, anyway, so I am refreshed after that wonderful vacation. And I have just been, I've just dived right in and I have a lot to share with you. And I have a lot of fun stuff coming up. Um, in the time that I was gone for August, we tried to put out a video tutorial every week. So you probably had, have seen a few of the video tutorials that were on YouTube. Uh, we did a video about doing mitered corners for a border and a video tutorial about quilting a uh, collage at your domestic machine. And let's see the other video tutorial. I think it was binding, if I'm not mistaken. I can't remember exactly. Um, but anyway, those can all be found at my YouTube channel. Um, and so good to see everybody. Thank you for saying hello. It's so nice to be back. Um, okay, so today I thought what I would do is introduce, uh, if you haven't seen already, we've got two new Halloween products that uh, we just launched this past week. So I'm going to show those to you and I'm going to do a quick demo about one of them. Uh, so let me just turn around and grab these. So this one is called Black and Jack and it's a really super easy beginner collage um, and it makes a pillow. So the pattern provides you with instructions for making the collage and then instructions for doing the pillow. Um, oh, that was the other tutorial that we did. It was uh, making a pillow. So if you um, have any questions about how to make this pillow, you can refer to go to my, uh, my, my, the Collage Quilter YouTube channel, and you can see the tutorial. Amelia, do you want to hand me that pillow real quick so I can show them? Um, anyway, it's just a nice envelope pillow, and and I, it's an easy way to do a pillow. So here's the, here was the, uh, the um, this was the tutorial on YouTube. Um, I'm gonna tell them. What? I'm gonna tell them. Hi. <laughs> You guys know I'm notorious for saying things before I should. I think that's part of why you watch my videos, because I'm always spewing stuff that I shouldn't say, but I'm going to tell you. Um, we are updating our free pattern that's available when you sign up for our uh, newsletter. And so the owl is going bye-bye and it's going to be replaced by the pansy. So... Uh, just a little tidbit. It's not available yet, but we will be announcing that very soon. Okay, so anyway, this is the current project. And I also launched this week this uh, bat um, pennant banner. So I made three of these bats. One, two, let's see, three. There we go. And this is, this is the perfect size to hang across my mantle. So um, I, I'm really excited about this cute little delicate bat. He was fun to make. This is more of an intermediate project. Um, and then the beginner project is the Black and Jack. So um, I had a question. Somebody bought this pattern and they had a question about it. And she was a little bit confused. She has been a quilter uh, before. She's been a quilter. She's never used one of my patterns. And so she thought that the pattern was didn't provide enough instruction. So I, 
probed a little bit further and kind of wanted to understand what she meant um, because it's really, really important to me that people who buy my patterns have success and that they make sense. I don't ever want you to feel like you can't contact me if you have questions or a problem. And that's why I do the live video. So her, she was a little bit, I guess, confused. Um, it sounded like she had done other collage patterns before. And once I kind of understood she hadn't done one of mine, I was like, oh, you're going to realize how, how simple this is. It is so simple that anybody can make this collage and make it look just like this. It's not hard. So I'm going to kind of give you a quick uh, synopsis of my tips and walk through that with you right now. So um, let's do that right now. Um, so when you purchase this pattern at collagequilter.com, um, it's only available as a download. And um, what you will do is you'll see that the template is in pieces. Now it's been designed so that you can print it at home on regular letter size, uh, letter size paper, but the template is larger than um, one sheet of paper. So the idea is that you're going to tape it together. So you can see here, I have a, what I always do um, is there's always going to be a white border and anywhere that the, the template needs to join, you need to trim off that white edge so that you can ensure uh, that it lines up seamlessly. So all I did was just trim off that edge, okay? And then I can see right where it's going to go. So you can see I've already done these others. I just wanted to demonstrate that. So now I'm going to line it up and I'm just going to tape it together. So let's pull out some tape. I've got a lot going on here. So I'm going to do it right down here and then I'll show you the, the template. So that's how when you are purchasing a download from me, just make sure that that's kind of how the, the template works. Um, go ahead and cut the edge off the white edge that would be in the middle of the design so that you can see the whole template. And then you're just going to tape it. So my finished template looks like this. Easy peasy, right? So what I'm going to do then is I am just selecting fabric. So I'm going to demonstrate on the Blackbird here. Um, but this, this concept um, applies to every gray area on this. So if I'm looking, let's just say I'm looking at the pumpkin, I can see there's one value, here's a darker value, and then there's still a lighter value in um, inside that's made to look kind of inside. And so what I'll do is I will select a wide variety of fabric. Now that is the key with, with any collage, Using my method, the key is to pull in a lot of different fabric. So I'm going to pull in the fabric to go here. And then I, and so that's going to be one set. And then the next set, I'm going to create a value set that's a little bit darker, that's quite distinct, so that you ensure that you have that distinction. And then, so we're going to demonstrate that here. And the reason the, the bird doesn't have any definition, I wanted this to be simple. And I want people to understand that all they need to do is pull in a wide variety of fabric. And that fabric, the interplay of that fabric is going to be what makes this collage look beautiful. Um, it's super, super simple. This is a very, very elementary beginner pattern. Um, so Let's try and I'm going to try and change the camera angle and make sure that you can see it. Hopefully this works. We haven't we haven't done this with Restream before, but we're hoping that this will work. OK, so let me see. Where am I? I need to look here at the. Oh, you know what, Amelia? I'm not sure I can do this. Let's yeah, see. Camera. Maybe I can. Let's see. Yep. OK, good. Hallelujah. All right. So now you can see that I've switched the camera angle and I'm just going to demonstrate how to do this. So the most important key when making one of my patterns is to just select a wide variety of fabric. And in fact, on the original design, I did not have any fabric that's completely black. What it is, is it's all dark. So this, ooh, you can't see the colors really well, but this is a really dark purple. 
This is a blue that has, uh, let me hold that up. Let's see, uh, there, if I can get a little bit of light there. Do you want me to shine a light on it? Yeah, so maybe if we can get a light on these, Amelia, that might help so people can understand the, um, is that doing anything? Okay, that one's really hard to see, but this one you can see that that's blue. This is another, a navy blue with a little uh, white dot in it. This is kind of a dark, um, warm purple. Um, and we've got, this one has a black background, but it has a lot of uh, variation in color. It's got a print on top. Um, this is also just a, simply a dark purple. Um, this is a black, a printed black that has lots of color in it. This is a navy blue dot. Uh, this is a kind of a royal dark blue batik. This one is kind of a lighter black with this dot. So the point is that I want you to understand that I've used a variety of fabrics. Not one of them is black. And then just to kind of demonstrate this idea again. So these are all going to be, do they differ? Are they different in value? Yes, they're different in, um, there is some differentiation in the value, but but that's okay. It's slight and it's, um, it's okay to keep it slight variation. And that variation is going to be what is, um, makes it look really neat. Amelia, will you just double check that everything is working? Can everybody hear me and see? Okay. Um, so here are some other, here's another set of fabric that's a little bit lighter and you can see the differentiation between this lighter value set and this darker set and I think I'll go ahead and just pull some of this in just to demonstrate that um, when I'm working on an area that's going to be a solid black we can kind of have some fun with it um, and just be bold in your in your in your choices of fabric so what I'll do all of these pieces have been prepared with light steam seam too you can tell that they're scraps that have come from my scrap bin but all of them have the light steam seam too. That's my adhesive recommendation um, for use with my parchment pressing method. So this is a parchment pressing pattern. Now I'll just make these cuts and kind of trim them off. I take a pin and I score it like that so that I can peel off that paper and expose the sticky part of the steam seam. So that steam seam is on my fabric. And then I'm just going to apply it in place. Now, parchment paper, the reason we use this is because it's a non stick heat resistant surface. And so sometimes the first few pieces that you apply to the parchment paper don't stick. That's why I love to have a wand iron like this on um, right next to me because this really helps to make sure that it sticks to the parchment paper. And then I'm just going to continue by selecting pieces of fabric and there's really no rhyme or reason about the shape. All my, my goal is to simply cover this area that defines the bird. Okay, so there we go. And sometimes I'll get a little, when I score it, I'll pull some threads off. So I want to make sure that I kind of clean that up a little bit and I can rotate things around and just make it fit. Now I make sure that all my pieces overlap by at least an eighth of an inch and they can overlap up to a half inch if you need to. So I'm pressing that to ensure that this piece sticks to the parchment paper, not to the piece underneath it. Here's this kind of fun black fabric. Now, I think Barbara asked if um, these fabrics are in my black bundle. Um, so I have some of these pieces are older, but there's a good wide variety of black. But I also recommend that you pull in some of the dark navy blue that's from maybe my blue bundle and um, purple and even green, dark green. So that's why all of my fabric bundles have dark. That's what you're looking for is the darkest value in each fabric bundle. And I really love to throw in these other colors besides just black. That's 
it just makes it so much more interesting as you're as you're going to see as I continue to kind of fill this fill this bird in. Um, Amelia, will you grab in one of those drawers is one of the raven patterns that's like I'm working on it and I want to demo, I want to show that as well. So you can see this is just how this is super super easy, right? Like anybody can do this. And all it is is I'm just it's paint by number. I'm just coloring in this area of the bird. Just set it right there. Thanks. Love you. You really don't even use actual black. Yeah. I think that's very important. Yeah. To emphasize. Amelia just mentioned, she said, you don't really even use black. There's not a solid piece of black in this whole spectrum of fabric that I've selected. Um, the other thing is that my, um, the finished project that I on um, the black and jack project has 12 different blacks in this area so 12 12 different fabrics so that's another really it's important to remember that okay so i think this is probably this is probably good enough for you to kind of i'll just kind of fill in this little area i don't want to bore you but i did want to provide just a quick little moment of demonstration so that if there's anybody else that is confused about how these patterns work, this is how they work. Super, super fun, super easy, not intimidating. And the key is to just come up with a wide variety of fabric that reads dark and let then let the fabric do its work. Okay, so I'm going to do one more piece here, and then I will put my face back on the screen, and we will talk some more about anything else that you want that you want to. Okay, so see how easy this is? And the other thing is you can see if I've used one piece of fabric, I'm going to use it elsewhere in the collage uh, just to provide some consistency with the project. Okay, so that bird is looking really good. It's gonna be awesome. Now I want you to, I'm gonna, we're gonna switch the camera again. If I can figure out how to switch the camera. Ta-da! Okay, great. Good to see you all again. Okay, so I'm just gonna hold a couple of these things up. I want you to look again using that same kind of method that I have actually no black fabric on here. Maybe that reads almost black, but it's actually really, really, really dark blue. So look at how much fabric I have in there, just kind of lighter fabric. I was just playing with it and having fun. And that's how blackbirds or ravens look, right? They have a little shimmer to them. And that shimmer is our brains will fill in the details. This is a suggestion. All these lighter pieces of fabric are just a suggestion of that sort of black shimmer that we see in a blackbird's uh, wings and feathers. So anyway, I hope that is helpful. There's one more, um, one more project that I want to show you. So this is the Raven that is in my um, in my Take Flight book. And it's also, the, is the Raven still available as a download? Yes. Okay, so I think the Raven is still available as a download on collagequilter.com. Um, and again, this is just a really, really good example of how, now for this particular Raven, to get a little bit more detail with this Raven, there are three or four different values. And so you can see um, this is the darkest value. Again, just a really wide variety of fabric. And then in the lighter values, I've actually used blue, not even gray, it's blue. And then if you look up here, a little bit of lavender. So the key again with the way I make collage is to incorporate a large variety of beautiful fabric not just batiks, go outside your comfort zone and pull in printed fabric as well. 
So that's the whole idea behind my fabric bundles as well, that I'm curating these fabric bundles so that you can add them to your, um, your palette when you are making a collage quilt. Okay, so um, I'm gonna get to the questions right now. So Kathy just asked a really good question and I wanna demonstrate this for you. So I should probably go back to the, back to, I should probably change the uh, angle, camera angle again. I pulled out a piece of yellow fabric. Here it is, so that I could demonstrate how to do the eye. Um, this is again, a really, really simple, fun method. You want to know how to do it because it is, um, you'll use it a lot for animal eyes. Um, okay, so here's my, the yellow fabric that I've selected. I'm gonna just change the camera angle again, really quick. Uh, let's see here. Okay, there we go. All right, so here we are back on, um, <clears throat> I need a pencil. Can you just hand me a pencil real quick? Because this not, these non-stick surfaces do much better with a pencil versus uh, a pen. So what I'm trying to do right now is just peel off this paper and leave the, leave the adhesive on the fabric. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do when I want to get the eye just right, I'm just going to peel back that fabric and um, draw right on the inside part of the paper. Now, I will also mention that this technique is mentioned step by step in, uh, I think, both of my books that are available. So if you need a good resource book, check out my books. Um, okay, so now that's given me a little guide. This is what I call a SAS template. So I'm going to just cut this out based on the template. Let's trim that up. Okay, so there's a perfect little round eye. And then we know that there's a little black part of his eye as well. So I'm going to take one of my dark pieces of paper and I think I can just do, a, just kind of cut a little teeny round circle here. And this might've been easier to cut um, or might be, it might be too hard to take the paper off. <laughs> Sometimes I like to take the paper off and then do these tiny little pieces. I need my tweezers. Will you hand me my tweezers? This is also where having tweezers comes in really handy. And of course I sell these tweezers and all of the supplies that you might need on collagequilter.com. So let's just peel off that paper kit there. There we go. And then I'm gonna put that right in the middle now that eye is ready to go. See how easy that is? So I will continue to just add all the fabric to this parchment paper. When I'm all finished, I'll make sure that I get this eye right where it needs to go. Until then, I can just leave it with the paper on the back. And the other thing too is I'm gonna make sure that I press that so that now the black part is adhered to that yellow eye. So there's that eye. Ta-da! Easy peasy, right? Okie doke. Let's go back here to the hi again. <laughs> okay, so there we go. Um, those are some quick little demonstrations to help you with this uh, project or any other project. But I do recommend that this is just a great beginner project. And I do recommend if you want to have um, some... Uh, you, you know, your little companion to help you and make sure that you're on, on track, um, get one of my books. Okay. So let's, um, with that, let's kind of look at questions and make sure that I've answered everybody's questions. Uh, let's see here. I'm just going to scroll down. It's so good to be back and have all your happy faces and kind comments in the, in the chat. Thank you so much. Um, We've got our friends 
our friend Joe from Wales, and we've got a friend from Greece today, and Oregon, Kentucky. I love it. Oh, Oregon. You know what, Gail? We've got smoke here as well. There, are, It's wildfire season, folks, and man alive. Well, we don't have a lot of wildfires happening in Utah right now. They, We get the smoke from Idaho and California, and it is just Ugh, it's awful. Okie dokie. Let's see here. Karen says she got the bat. Now she regrets not buying Black and Jack. Well, guess what, Karen? It's not too late. <laughs> it's there. Uh, let's see. And our friend Heike from Germany. Um, okay. I'm just going through comments. Um... At looking for questions. Okay, so here is um, here's Liz's question. What type of paper did you draw on? Is it tracing paper? No, it is parchment paper. So keep in mind when you purchase one of my patterns, all of these instructions are in the pattern. So it will tell you that you trace the template onto your parchment paper. Parchment paper is it cannot be replaced with freezer paper or wax paper or anything else. It has to be parchment paper. Parchment paper is the same thing as baking paper. It's what we use to um, line our cookie sheets. And we need that because it's nonstick and it's heat resistant. Okay, so Karen said two questions. Will you be creating animal or other types of patterns based on your trips? Will you have African fabrics for us? Oh, that's so great. Um, so I did buy some African fabric, just kind of mostly for my use. I didn't buy a whole lot. Um, and yes, I have kind of an idea that I'm formulating in my head for African um, animals. And so there you go. Um, as somewhat, Darlene just said, is there a video on the hummingbird? Um, I don't believe there's a specific video about making the hummingbird. Um, at this point, I have made over a hundred videos on YouTube and I can't recall all of what's there. Again, I think the best resource, if you don't have it already, if you're making birds in particular, is uh, my Take Flight book. In that book, there are, oh, six birds, and there are step-by-step -step photos about making birds that would apply to the hummingbird as well. Speaking of birds, you know what? The thing that I loved so much in Africa were the birds. And that's one thing that, you know I love birds. I've made lots of birds, and I, I am really, really inspired to do a quilt with African birds. So anyway, let's keep going. Oh, we have a friend from Scotland. Great to have you. Um, I'm looking for any questions that you have, and we have a friend from Not South Africa. Questions. Yeah, Amelia, if you, okay, Amelia's got some questions, so she's going to, she's going to moderate, and I will answer questions. Okay, do you trim along the outside lines when you're finished collaging before applicating onto your background? Okay, so this is a really good question. Somebody said, do you trim along the outline? Uh, before you apply your collage to uh, the background fabric. Generally, I do not. Um, and part of that, the reason for that is because this is a handcraft, handcrafted item. I don't care if it has small imperfections. In fact, I kind of like the small imperfections. So I work to get each of my pieces to fit within the collage um the design and then from there if it's not perfect i don't worry about it however if you have some physical limitations and doing kind of detail work is really hard for you you certainly could trim out from the back side because you can still see um if i hold up one of these parchment pieces and i show it to you from the back you could still see the tracing and so you can trim it from that side if you need to and you're not applicating it right Okay, yeah, that's another great question. Um, this is not traditional applique. This is raw edge collage. So collage implies that everything is going to be, that there are going to be multiple pieces overlapping to create the image. And 
it's not traditional applique. Traditional applique requires turning under so that you avoid any raw edges, and this is entirely made with raw edges. So the other thing that's important to remember is that I don't, where is the pillow? I do not go around and uh, I do not trim around each single piece or excuse me, stitch around each single piece. I treat this as a solid piece when after I've peeled it off from my parchment paper. So when my collage is finished, um, I press it with a dry hot iron to the parchment paper and then I can peel it off and it comes off quite a bit like a sticker. I peeled off this entire piece just like it's a sticker and then I can apply it to my background fabric and I then I press it and steam it really good. Steam is super, super important and then I quilt it and so the quilting is dense because I'm not stitching around each piece. I'm stitching, I'm doing doodle stitching. So I'm mimicking the shape of the design. So I'm drawing with thread what a, what a pumpkin, the shape of a pumpkin. So I, again, I'm not going around each piece. I'm just quilting through it to emphasize the overall design. Um, and I like to have dense quilting so that you don't have raw edges um, coming up. Okay. Um, so Kathy just asked a question real quick about indicating wings. With this design, I'm not worried about indicating wings. This is just a, it's a very stylized, simple design. And so I'm not trying to make it look realistic um, per se. Okay. Um, Amelia. What is the background fabric? Okay. So this background fabric is now let me say once I have my collage finished, then I like to audition fabric. So I could have used a variety of different fabrics and this was just the one that I chose that's, I've got a bolt of this. And so I, um, it's a William, no, it's a Morris. William Morris. Yeah, it's a William Morris fabric um, uh, distributed by Free Spirit. Um, if you are interested in this background fabric, just let me know. I, I wasn't sure how many people might be interested in a kit. So I did not kit this, but I do have some available. Um, okay, let's see here. Uh, Amelia, other questions? What kind of needle do you use on your machine when you're quilting over your design? Launcher, mossy tutorial. Um, yeah, okay. So somebody just asked a question about what kind of needle do I use when I'm quilting? Um, I would refer you to the last YouTube video that I, I'll post the link. yeah, Amelia's going to post the link in this chat. So I did a YouTube video that talked about the needle and the thread and the quilting. Um, so there is a, there is a YouTube tutorial about that. Um, and then also I use the needle that is for sale on collagequilter.com. It's, a it's, a Schmetz, Schmetz non -stick, non -stick, 90, 90 or something. yeah, I can't remember exactly what the size is, but it's on, it's for sale. The, a pack of those needles is for sale at Collage Quilter. And that's the needle that I use that's in my machine. Okie dokie. Other questions, Amelia? Could a Sharpie be used for the black of the eye? Um, no. I, so somebody just asked if a Sharpie could be used for the black of the eye. Um, I would be careful using a Sharpie because I would worry that it would bleed, but you can test it, test it on a piece of fabric, see if it works. If it works, great, go ahead and do it. But um, I, I would be really cautious about it bleeding. Okay. Um, what's, the next step? Uh, what's the next step after you collage? Do you peel the parchment paper off? Okay. Yeah. So as I mentioned a minute ago, so this question was, what's the next step after I collage? So after I've collaged the entire design on the parchment paper, um, yeah, then the next step is to press it all to ensure that all those collaged pieces are sticking together. When I'm happy with it, I want them to stick together. And then, um, then I can peel it off in one piece and audition different background fabrics. Okay. Next question. Um, people are just wanting a kit. Oh, okay. Together. So I guess we'll want, we'll, we'll put together a kit. Um, 
I think now my next question is folks. So I can sell just this background piece of fabric. Um, I can sell you the fabric for the back of the quilt or for the back of the um, pillow. pillow. The one thing that you will need to probably find yourselves is, let me pull this out. Okay, so because you're quilting this, I recommend having, um, you, you're gonna want to, to do the quilt, you know, create a traditional quilt. That's how I did it. So I, I did my, my top, the top of the pillow, um, with the collage and then the background fabric. And then I made a traditional quilt sandwich. So I took batting and then just a random piece of back fabric for the quilt part. Um, I don't know that I'll include that in a kit. You probably need to find that yourself. Um, and it can be anything because you're never going to see it, right? It just needs to be the right size. Uh, so anyway, there we go. There's the pillow. Um, and, I, and, and then the other, the other thing I will not include in a kit um, are all of these fabric pieces because that's the whole point of the bundles um, that I would recommend using the bundles uh, dark blue and maybe some in the black bundle or dark purple or dark green. And then obviously we've got the orange bundle and this is from my yellow. Uh, and then we've got fabric from the white bundle. So if you have those already, that's what I recommend using. Um, yeah, I, I don't think I'm going to, I don't think I'm going to kit the fabric for the collage just because it's redundant. So, all righty. Um, did you do the spider webs in the corners? Oh, great question. So somebody just asked how I did the spider web in the corners. So I, um, when I was quilting this, I just drew out with some, a fabric pen that, you know, the disappearing ink fabric pen, I just kind of drew uh, some spider webs in the corners and um, quilted with a contrasting thread those, uh, those spider webs. So I'm glad that somebody noticed them. They're very, they're pretty subtle, but just a, I like subtle little details. So there you have it. Okay, other questions, Amelia? Mm. Were you able to buy fabric in Paris? Oh, somebody asked if I was able to buy fabric in Paris. Um, unfortunately, no. I was not able to go fabric shopping because my flight to Paris was canceled. And I was rerouted through London. So I did not get to Paris to go fabric shopping. Sadly enough, I was so disappointed. I can't even tell you. But um, maybe another time. I'll get there. Okay, so uh, more questions, Amelia? Mm, no. Okay, I just want to make sure that my everybody has met my daughter, Amelia. Amelia, come over here. Okay. Show your face. Some of some of our friends haven't met you. This is my my oldest daughter, Amelia, and isn't she the cutest little ladybug? I love her so much. <laughs> she is my um my assistant she works for me full time i i prefer to say we work together full time doing this i yes. manage her she is my boss and amelia just graduated from art and design in i graduated from art and design no i Sorry. graduated with a degree in art and design and a minor <laughs> in art history okay so amelia knows her crap yeah, <laughs> sorry. Amelia knows her stuff and she's awesome. And I just want you to know who she is because when I'm talking to Amelia, to somebody off camera, it's her. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Um, okay. Thanks a lot guys for being here. And, um, oh gosh, <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so bad about this kit thing. I got to pull my stuff together. Um, okay. Anyway, 
I hope I've answered most of your questions. I hope you have fun with this little project if it's in your plans to do something for Halloween. And um, I will see you again next week. I actually have a special guest who will be on our show next week. So I'll be interviewing her and you'll just watch for that announcement. Um, until then, have a wonderful week. And you can always find me again if you're looking for some more help at collagequilter.com. That's kind of the central hub. So you can email me from there and you can find all of my education and resources from there. So have a lovely day. Talk to you later.